Hello and welcome to this daily reflection for Thursday the 2nd of July. My name is David and I'm an occasional preacher and church warden here in Walton on Thames. Today we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 16 verses 19 to 31. So if you'd like to grab your Bible and look up that passage and pause the video now, I'll continue in a minute. What a passage this is, a passage of great contrasts. Even in the first couple of verses, we learn about the, the rich man and how very rich he is. In my version, it says that he lived in luxury every day. Not just that he was rich and he wore fine clothes, but he lived in luxury. And yet in the following verse, we hear about the beggar Lazarus who lies at his gate, pleading daily for, for any morsel of food to give him sustenance. He's so desperate that he would even eat the small crumbs that fall from the rich man's table. He's covered in sores. And the only comfort he gets is from the dogs licking the sores. And then the next moment we read about both of them, they both died. And the contrast is just as wide. In fact, it's wider. But the roles are reversed in many respects. Lazarus is carried by the angels to Abraham and is seated by Abraham and is given all the riches of heaven that God has promised. And the rich man, in contrast, is down in hell, an enormous chasm between the two, an in, a, a chasm which can't be bridged. There's no way of getting across. And the rich man is down there and he sees Lazarus seated with Abraham and pleads that Abraham let Lazarus even dip his finger in water and let a drop quench his thirst. But Abraham says the chasm is too great. It can't be, it can't be covered, it can't be breached. And this contrasts again back with the earthly position. Yes, there was a chasm between the earthly existence of the rich man and the beggar Lazarus. But the chasm could be breached there. The rich man had an opportunity to do something about Lazarus's state. Again, in verse 19, my Bible says there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen. Well, let's say, for argument's sake, that the rich man sold one of his rich linen outfits and used that money to ease Lazarus's lot. The rich man, I would suggest, because he lived in luxury every day, would would not have noticed the small, to him, the small amount that he would have lost. But the gain to Lazarus would have been huge, the man who had nothing. But the rich man chose to do nothing. He chose to ignore Lazarus. He chose to isolate himself and enjoy selfishly everything that he had been given while Lazarus suffered. And so we get the contrast once they've died. This might make us think that there is no compassion at all with the rich man. But actually, if we read on in this passage, the rich man, I think, recognises his position. But he does have a degree of compassion because he says, I've got five brothers if I'm not going to be helped, please, could Lazarus not go back to earth and, and, and speak to them and persuade them to change and to look out for people who are, who are more needy? But Abraham's response is, but why would sending Lazarus down to them make any difference at all? They've had all the prophets. They've had Moses. So sending Lazarus, someone coming back from the dead, is not going to make any difference whatsoever. 
And in verse 31, he puts it plainly. He says, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. Where does that leave us? I'm not, I wouldn't describe myself as rich. I mean, I read the, the description of the rich man. I don't live in luxury every day. Or I don't think I do. But when compared to other people who have nothing, they would look at me and say, you do live in luxury. You do have everything. And I do. It's right. God has been very generous to me and provided. So we all might look at ourselves and say, well, I'm, I'm not rich. I can't compare myself to that rich person. But actually, if we put ourselves in the place of someone who is in desperate need and look at ourselves, then we would say we are rich and God has blessed us richly. He puts food on our table. He gives us security. He gives us somewhere to live. And there are still many people in our own country, let alone the rest of the world, who are struggling desperately, as Lazarus did. What hardship would it be for us to give a little of our riches in order to relieve the suffering and pain of someone else in great need now? I ask myself after reading this passage, do I give enough? Do I share my rich resources that God has blessed me with, with people who are less fortunate than I? Than I? Can I give more? Jesus' two great commandments were love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength and love your neighbour as yourself. These are the first two commandments and the greatest commandments. I ask myself, am I keeping those? Perhaps we should all ask ourselves, are we keeping those commandments? Are we feeding Lazarus when he calls out? Or are we locking the gate and keeping our riches to ourselves? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for everything that we have here and now. We thank you for all the blessings you have poured upon us and all the riches you have given us. Even if sometimes we don't feel rich, Lord. When we look at ourselves and think upon those who have nothing, Lord, we are rich and we are blessed. Thank you. Lord, help us to help those who are in greatest need. Amen.